Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Flowshop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm with Goldust. Social distancing. <laughs> I know, I know this thing is really serious. The pandemic, this whole coronavirus thing is affecting a lot of creatives. We photographers, those who shoot outside, we're used to shooting outside and stuff. And now we can't because of social distancing. But seriously, um, because of this, we can't create the content that we are used to creating and I want to use this time to do an indoor shoot but still be a little bit creative about it. So we're going to do it indoors but it's going to end up looking like we did it outdoors. So the setup is really simple. I have this brown backdrop which is lowered because it's not going to be the background I'm going to shoot here against. I'm going to shoot here against the white wall and I'm going to replace it so in the end it's going to look like we did a shoot outdoors. So maybe we took this outside and it's like a mini wall. Sometimes you can play with like a prop, basically. It's on the focus. I'm hoping it's going to be interesting. I'm hoping I'm going to learn something out of it and um, stay tuned. I'm going to go over my lighting setup, the idea I have, and then, uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it, actually. All right, so today's setup is really simple. I'm going to use one light. I'm going to try and mimic sunlight. So I'm going to use my Godox 8600 in a seven inch cone and it has no diffusion whatsoever on it. It's going to be like a really hard source of light shining straight onto the model. There's going to be a little bit of a shadow on this brown backdrop thingy, which is fine. I just have to make sure there's nothing on the plain white background. So when I'm cutting hair out of it, it's going to be pretty much seamless. Um, so that is basically what I have for today's setup. And let's just jump right into shooting. So my settings are 1 over 160 on the shutter speed end. 2.2 on the aperture and ISO 200. I also have my Godox 8600 BM on 1 over 128, so that's just about the least power. I'm hoping this gives me like a decent exposure and then we can start shooting. I want the image to be quite bright because it's going to end up looking like we took it outdoors. You know? I'm changing the position of the reflector because I feel when I go down, it's going to block me. And also I want it to be diagonal to the source of light so i'm sure i'm bouncing that light back onto her so i think this is going to work i'm also going to be shooting from a lower angle so that i can get more of the wall which would eventually become more of the sky all right let me take a test shot and see how this looks yeah perfect okay let's start with that and instead of you holding the entire rim, you can put your hand on it. Aha, so let me see your fingers. Yeah, just yeah, just like that. Oh, that's perfect. I really love the pose. I think I mistakenly bumped my strobe to 1 over 128.3, so I'm going all the way to 1 over 128. Okay. Oh yeah, this looks really, really good. Can you face me? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, like that. Maybe bring your arms out like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now look at me in the next one. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm happy with some of these shots. We can change into the other outfit and then we'll take a few frames and then we can compare to see which one works well. Okay, so she's changing to a black outfit. I think it's still going to work with this background, but I don't know how it's going to translate with the lighting. So I'm going to do a test. If it works, we're going to maintain it. If not, I may just want to enlarge the light a little bit by using my 25 inch beauty dish softbox on it. So let's start testing with this one, see how it looks. If it works, we maintain it. If not, we'll switch. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, I'm trying to get a really low angle. That's why I'm like this. So let me even scooch a little lower. I'm breaking my neck for you guys. So remember to subscribe. It's really going to help me. Okay. Woo. 
or maybe step back a little bit get closer to yeah oh yeah this is much better okay let me see if there's lighting oh it works with the black i think i'm going to maintain this light source and she's doing amazing okay yeah gorge yeah i love that These are really, really good. Let me just switch to the 25 inch beauty dish and then do a few more frames just to see how it's going to affect the shot. <laughs> okay. The reason why I'm taking the grid off is when I was using the cone, it was bare and it was spreading. And I think I wanted to spread a little bit, so I don't mind taking the grid off. Okay. So we have a slightly bigger light source. So I'm going to increase my strobe light from 1 over 128 to 1 over 16. Take another test. So now it's like we have a slight overcast. It's not really overcast because I still have defined shadows because even though this is a larger modifier than before it's still quite small so we are losing the specularity that we we're getting from the cone now maybe what i can do for it to look exactly like the cone is probably take the outer diffusion panel off take another test and it's okay but i just want to increase it a little bit so now the power is on one over 64 and it's still too strong so i'm going to go down to one over 128.3 so take another test i think we can work with this so let's just start taking a few frames again ready we already have the shots, I just want to take a few frames for comparison. I hope you enjoyed all the different light setups that we've been through. We're going to jump onto the computer. I'm going to add in the sky for you guys to see how it's going to look like. But if you enjoyed the video so far, don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you on my computer screen. Alright guys, welcome to my screen. I quickly want to show you what I have done. So this is the raw image that I have imported and this is what it's looking like right now. But I'm going to go through the steps and show you guys everything that I have done and I'm also going to be announcing what the challenge for this image is going to be. So in the behind the scenes video, I kept talking about sky, 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 but you can see that I ended up replacing it with more of like a cityscape of our airport. So let's just jump right into everything I've done. And then I'm going to be talking about the challenge at the end of the video. Um, the first thing I did was to create a background and in the background, I have done so many things. I'm going to go through them. But in the meantime, let me just hide that and start with the subject. So you can see that I've already cut it out of the background and if I open up the subject um, folder right now you can see this is the mask so if I show you the healing this is what I've done if I zoom to her face a little bit you can see that I didn't do so much just remove some tiny spots on her face and that was just about it for the healing and I run my frequency separation action and you can see that um, that also has a mask on because if you look inside you can see the background is in there but I just had to add a mask so it's just affecting the subject as well so before after just a little bit of frequency separation and then i brought the opacity down to 50 percent so next thing i did was a lot of dodge and burn and that generally cleaned up the image a lot so here's before dodge and burn and this is after dodge and burn if i zoom in a little bit again you can see before dodge and burn and after dodge and burn and i did another level of dodge and burn which was just adding a little bit of form to the subject so before and after so when I got this clean um, subject, the next thing I did was to liquefy the subject and I initially merged everything onto a new layer and then I added my 
I converted it into a smart object and then added the liquify. So this is before the liquify and this is after the liquify. Just a little bit of um, straightening on some parts of the image, nothing too serious. Okay, so I'm going to make my background visible and I'm going to show you everything that I've done inside of the background layer. So the very first thing is the background itself. And when I import it, you can see it's looking desaturated. It's looking darker than the shot itself. Also, it was cloudy that day, basically. So there's no direction. There's no shadow. Everything is just soft light. So I needed to add or create my own light source and then add some dimension to the buildings. So the first thing I did was to correct the exposure a little bit. All right. Then the next thing I did was to paint some fake shadows onto the building. You can see before the shadow paintings and after the shadow painting. So I looked under her neck, for example, you can see this is the direction of the light, meaning that it's coming in from the right hand side. So I needed to darken um, some parts of the building. I just imagined it and then painted it in because if I didn't show you this, you wouldn't know that this wasn't there basically. So sometimes if a background isn't really fitting what you're looking at, you can use lighting to reshape it and add a little bit more believability, <laughs> that's the word, to your background. So it was looking very soft and lacking contrast, lacking shadows, and immediately I did that, it's already improved the image, the background especially, a lot. And the next thing I also did was to add some light areas to the to the building so i'm dodging and burning essentially so i'm adding darkening to some parts and i'm adding lights to some parts just to make it pop and make it look a little bit brighter now after doing all that i noticed that you can't have shadows on the buildings when your sky itself looks washed out or looks like it was cloudy or something so the next thing i did was to put in a sky so it added color it brought color into the frame and i also added a little bit of vibrance boost it also added some contrast to the background and shifted the color a little bit for it to look believable all right now the next thing i did was to make her fit the background a little bit and that was just me adding a little bit of a glow to the background so you can see i i, I just painted with white and changed the blending mode of that particular layer to overlay and set the opacity to 72 percent so what this is doing essentially is just so if i just change it quickly to normal you can see it's just a white brush that i painted okay a soft white brush round white brush i painted that and i changed the blending mode from normal to overlay so that's adding contrast is making the brighter parts brighter and also darkening the dark parts just a little bit so now that i have my background and my subjects all sorted out the next thing i need to do was work on the color because obviously you can see they don't look like they were shot at the same place so remember i shot this indoors and i'm just pretending like we're on a rooftop where i put my background my brown background there for it to stand in front and i'm shooting against the skyline but again we all know what's happening in the world so this is not really a serious composite that i'm trying to do we're just having fun that's why i'm leaving the background as it is i could have replaced it with a wall so you think that i really went up there to do it but i just want you to see that this was done indoors so i want to have some elements of the of the indoor stuff in there and i just want to replace the background just adding excitement so this is not really like a super serious composite i'm doing i'm just having fun changing the background and i want you guys to be able to have fun and change the background as well so it's not like a hundred percent composites where the moment you look at it you think oh this was really done outside we're just having fun i just want us to have fun and i don't want you to think that you can't do it so again it's not too serious don't be scared to try it out we're all just having fun again i'm not adding the background I'm just reminding you, I'm not adding the background. Go on Google, look anywhere. If you have any cityscape or whatever it is, just choose your background. I don't want to limit you. Let me see what you can do and then post them on Instagram and then tag me. So the very first folder is already doing a lot to the image. So you can see it, I'm more or less like relighting here and also desaturating the colors on here, including the background just a little bit. So I'm going to open that folder and show you everything that's in there. So I'm going to hide all of this and we're going to start with the one I call reduce skin saturation. And it's a huge saturation adjustment layer. And all I did was use the master and then drop it down to minus six. So if I go into reds, you can see I also pulled down the reds and then added a little bit of yellow and then also increased the lightness a little bit. If I go into the yellows, I also pushed it down a little bit and then I also decreased the saturation just a tiny bit. This is 
without the reduced skin saturation and then this is with the reduced skin saturation it's just removing reds and yellows and general color out of the image and brightening it just a tiny bit i went into my exposure and then brought it down a little bit before and after just bringing down the exposure the next thing i also did was create a curve and with this curve what it's doing is is adding some darkness to the image but i don't want it to affect everywhere right so i just use a mask so if i press alt and click on the mask you can see this where the white is is where the effect is going to be revealed the most so it's just a little bit of like a gradation from white to black at the top so it's going to be prominent at the bottom and less prominent at the top that's why you're seeing the darkening happening at the bottom of the image now the next thing i did was to add another brighten adjustment layer and i used curves to do that just to create um, this circular uh, mask around here to make the brightening visible just at the top because again if the light is coming from the top it's going to hit the top more than it's going to hit the bottom all right so moving on to the next filter i use the photo filter and i use the cooling photo filter the 82 cooling filter and then i added a mask but the mask is not a black mask you can see it's a 50 percent gray mask and i just wanted the effect to be subtle on the outfits but then be visible in the rest of the image that's why i did that now my next layer is a hue saturation adjustment layer and all i'm doing is pulling out some of the color in the background because i didn't want without it is looking really close to a skin tone it looks good but i just wanted to add another level of separation now my next color work too is where i did a lot of color shifting or color grading and it's currently at 17 percent if i take it all the way to 100 percent this is how strong the effect is okay but i just wanted a little bit of a color shift so i moved it to 17 percent and this is how it's looking then later i added noise and i added a vignette the way i did a vignette was really simple i created a curves like two curves adjustments one which is bright and another which is dark so so the bright one i made visible as you can see just where the subject is and leaving this area like that and the other one which is dark i just revealed it around the subject so it's darkening the edges around the subject and that brings us to the end of this mini composite that we've done so the challenge i'm announcing is i'm going to be giving this image okay i'm going to be giving two versions so the link is in the description if you want to download it and try it out please do but please take note of those involved in this image i'm going to leave their links in the description please don't forget to copy and tag when you're posting so talking about the challenge i decided to do this because i want us to be a little bit more creative i think we're seeing too many portraits too many um headshots and things and so i just wanted to add a little bit more of a dimension to to this whole challenge that's going around um, stretch your imagination a little bit try and create a composite don't be too scared we're just having fun remember just try and do something different something that you're not used to doing you can see mine is not 100 percent believable but i'm putting it out there anyways so have fun with it I, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to imagine and create out of this and uh, yeah use the link down below to download the images and uh, tag me on instagram and i'll be leaving comments or reposting on my story um, so people get to see all the work that we are doing so um before i go i also want to talk about my digital store i'm going to put a link down below you can check it out i have uh free lots in there i have some paid lots and i also have a free raw file in case you want to download a portrait to work on and i also have another set of raw files that are paid for and what you're paying for is a custom video so when you edit those three images and you have any issues editing or you want my feedback you can send me psd files of those and i'll be creating custom videos answering the questions just for you so those videos are not going to be online they're just going to be straight into your inbox for you um, solving your particular problem so yeah take a look and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one